Hello Internet. Uh, we meet again. Uh, I'm here with another lesson of our, of our uh, Blender for Motion Design series. And this time we're going to be uh, specific. We're going to create the animation that you just saw. And I will be focusing on, on the different solutions that um, made it possible. There's going to be some things that um, are going to be slightly advanced and perhaps not necessary, like the spinner that we're going to create. Uh, we're going to create the actual animation rather than just uh, you know shoving a looping um, animation as a texture. But today we're going to learn how to do the clipping. You, you might have noticed that the sidebar and the toolbar slide away when the when the session comes up and to do that we're not gonna just scale those uh, although it was a fraction of a second we're going to slide them away so hide them and it's a windowed mock-up so we can't just move it away because you would see it next to the window so what we're gonna do is gonna be uh, thank you kids <laughs> we're going to and that's just you know every day. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to use something called uh, modifiers and uh, particularly the boolean operation modifier. So let's get going. So I think the best way to approach this um, is to focus on individual elements of the animation that, that you see and go uh, recreate the part one by one. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is clipping paths. Now those aren't actually clipping paths but it's something that I found to do the same job. Um, I call them clipping paths because I use that feature in Inkscape all the time. And so the first thing I'm going to show you is how clipping masks work in Inkscape. So essentially a clipping mask is a sort of a, a hole you peek through at an object. Those are useful in the cases where you want to retain editability of an object but still sort of show a part of it. So you want to like uh, hide some stuff but you don't necessarily want to really damage the uh, the shape and set something in stone so I'm gonna just create this ellipse make a different color so you see the two objects you the object that is above the other one is the clipping mask and then you just set object clip set and there you have it. So you still have the object is still there. If you look at the outline view, you can still see it in there. Uh, in the recent Inkscape, you can even edit both. So if you go into node editing, you can still um, sort of. Um, there are some offset issues there, but you can still edit the uh, the shapes both of the clipping mask and the object itself um, but it usually due to those um, group transformation offsets uh, it usually is better to just uh, ungroup and fix things and then then uh, do the clipping mask again but uh, that's how things work in in Inkscape. Now, what was the thing that we needed this for? I'm going to use a, a local view, which is very useful. If you have a complex, this is not a complex scene, but if you would have a more complex scene, it's usually good to work on a specific thing by creating a local view. So you select whatever you need, one object selection, and then you hit on the numerical keyboard, you hit the slash key and that brings you to the um, to like a local view. I, I pushed five to get the orthogonal view so we don't get that sort of stuff. Now what you're seeing here is a sidebar that at some point at the end of the animation slides away like that. So 
if we only used uh, the knowledge that, that you've gained last time, uh, we could have scaled this, the, the sidebar, because it's only there for a fraction of a second. We don't want any of the animations, we don't, we don't want them to, to take long. Like in the recent Mac OS X update, the Lion release, some of the transitions that they have take ages like going full screen with an app. I know that they tried to hint to uh, that, that it creates a new workspace, but it just takes so long to, to go full screen. I really dislike that. So we want everything to be snappy. And so uh, we might be able to have gotten away with uh, just scaling the, the sidebar, but I think this is better. So. What is this? How how did we do this? I'm going to recreate that by creating a new scene completely. And uh, I don't even have a camera or anything. Let's just do home. No, that doesn't work. Uh, so I'll add a, well, let's do the import thing. Import images as planes. Now I should have saved this. But it doesn't matter what this is probably yes, this is what I want textures and I want the sidebar and I want shadeless use alpha pre multiply and use the dimensions. Ignore the errors that I have no idea what, what it is and I do press the home key so that I have a nice um, I can scale and rotate around the object easily. Um, it's sort of, if you press home in a 3D view or any view actually, it tries to show everything that's inside that view. And in the 3D viewport, it also somehow sets the center pivot point. It resets it so that you can pan around easily. It's very useful. Anyway, so we're set up. Now we're going to add a a clipping path. Now uh, it's not going to be a path. I, I probably it maybe works with a plane. I should have tried, but I sort of expected uh, trouble, so I used a cube. So I will use a cube. Pushed five. Sorry about the noise at the back. I pushed five uh, for the ortho view, which we're using in the original scene. And now you see that there is a minor problem. Before we even dive into uh, how we're gonna clip things, this probably isn't what we want. There's an object that is fully opaque in our 3D view and we don't get to see what we want to see. Uh, to work around that, we need to address this again at the two levels. We want the 3D view and we want the render. So the render, uh, we do that by adding a material and making it transparent. Yes, that was easy. And the render now should be fine. The 3D view is a different story. Uh, what you do, because you don't want this to be completely hidden, we could do that by moving it to a different works uh, layer. Yes, layers, that they're called layers. Um, but um, we are going to be talking about layers later on because we will be animating this. So uh, I will postpone that solution because for our case, we actually might need to uh, move with the clipping object and edit that. So it's good to see it, but it's not good for it to obstruct our view. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the way it's drawn in the 3D viewport and you do that in the object uh, properties and one of them is displays this this bug a little and this is the type of display and you have multiple things and wire is the one that we want because we can see it but it doesn't obstruct the view so i actually don't think that we need to do anything more to demo how we clip this object with this object. <clears throat> so how do we do it? There's no clipping objects, but there is Boolean operations. 
Inkscape actually does have Boolean operations as well. I closed it. But um, those are destructive. You apply it and it's done. Uh, so that's where the modifier stack in Blender really shines. Unlike in Inkscape, um, it also allows you to do to retain the original shape and an object and perform some operations on it. But unlike Inkscape, it's very fast. So uh, it's not just a demo feature, it actually works. So you go to the modifier um, properties and you create a new one. And one of them is Boolean operations, which we add. And uh, I screwed up because I actually had the clipping path selected and that's not what we want. What we want is the object itself. So I'm going to add it again, um, boolean. <clears throat> now the operation is intersect. We want whatever those two objects um, intersect at, we want to show that. So we want to cut everything that's outside of the boundary of, of, of this clipping path, uh, I mean clipping object. Uh, we need to, we could probably name it. You can name it either in the object properties here, or you can name it, uh, if you press the N key, you get like properties for, for objects. And one of them is how it's called. <coughs> so I go back to modifiers and we select the object. And uh, guess what? That's, that is all we need to do. Now the clipping is applied real time. I'm moving things, I can scale it, I can rotate it, and I'm always displaying just the part that's uh, an intersection of, the, of those two objects. Now, one thing you'll note is that the object usually, I mean, the, the Boolean operation makes sense for proper 3D objects. So it tries to fill some faces, which is not what we want. But as you can see, it hasn't really been a problem. Uh, it's only for the for the uh, 3D view that's somehow icky, I don't know. But for the render, it's not a problem. And in my cases, it never was a problem in the preview because I, I use the top view and it, it's simply hasn't been a problem. If it is a problem, we might need to work around that. I'm not fully aware of, of how to do that, but it hasn't been a problem, so that's good. And on that note, I'd like to finish this part. Next time, we're going to uh, be focusing on the texture animation. Um, if you guys, if there's any one of you that follows the series that actually has experience with Blender, um, and you have an idea how to solve the issue of the 3D viewport not updating uh, when you blend between multiple textures per material, please let me know. I, um, I actually had GLSL working at some point, but even, even there it wasn't really working. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you have a solution to that, please feel free to contact me either through the YouTube comments, uh, on my blog, send an email, it's in the footer of, uh, of my website, uh, any, or Twitter, whatever. Uh, just let me know if you found a solution how to do this, uh, rather than creating you know, multiple objects and, and, and fading there, because the, the scene gets kind of messy if you do that. So there, um, thank you guys for uh, for uh, watching the series and I hope I'll uh, see you next time. Bye bye.